I love going for walks. <laughs> walks are my favourite thing. Me and my dog wander off for an hour or so every day. We're very lucky because at the back of our house, there's an open countryside and some of it is farm, but most of it is wild and wonderful. I like to go in the early evening and it's been great during lockdown because there's a little community of us dog walkers up there and we pass on observations. You know, the kind of thing, what flowers are out, how sweet the blackberries are this year, that sort of thing. Then, of course, we have a bit of a moan about the litter and the kids that occasionally ride their scrambler bikes on the footpaths. And naturally, we talk about the dogs. Yes, he's a rescue dog. Oh, he's getting old and a bit lumpy now. <laughs> you know, dog chat. Mm. Mm. I love all the birds. I've been trying to identify them from the song. It's not easy. The warblers all sound the same when you hear them in isolation. One of my favourites, don't laugh, I know most people hate them, but one of my favourites is the magpie. I saw seven tonight. <laughs> one for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl and four for a boy. Five for silver, six for gold, seven for a secret never to be told. <laughs> it's never six. <laughs> I could do with a bit of gold right now. Always things to do on the house. Gutters need clearing and I can't get up there. Things need replacing and then there's the garden. I can't pass the garden centre. Oh, sorry, I digress. I'm rambling. Get it? Rambling. Walking. <laughs> anyway, I've been for a really long walk tonight and I'm just settling down now with a mug of hot chocolate and a bis biscuit. Where's my biscuits? Chocolate and a biscuit. Oh, naughty. But I can't resist custard cream before bedtime. <laughs> mm. Mm. I decided to make a record of tonight's walk because, well, it was a bit strange, really. I was heading up the hill towards the wood. It's a beautiful, ancient, deciduous wood. Mostly oak, but not exclusively. It's been at the top of the hill, well, forever, I suppose. <laughs> it used to mark the border between Mercia and Northumbria back in the day. Mm. Sorry. Wandering off a bit of the point again. <laughs> well, I like ancient history too. Mm. Anyway, where was I? Oh, across the field, saw the magpies and then, yeah, headed up to the wood. I hadn't been walking for very long. Before I came across the path, I didn't remember seeing it before. So I followed it, as you do. It got a bit nettly and I had to negotiate some rambles, so it clearly hadn't been walked much before. But I kept plodding on. The dog always finds new smells to shove his nose into. Just as I was thinking I should turn back, I spotted a clearing up ahead. So I headed for that. It wasn't easy. The brambles kept wrapping around my legs. Good job I've got good strong walking trousers. But I was determined. <clears throat> to one side of the clearing, there was the biggest, oldest oak tree I've ever seen. And I mean, including the major oak. Hmm. That's big. <clears throat> but this was vast. No props holding it up like the major oak has. <laughs> I got to the tree a bit knackered if I'm honest, um, when I noticed a huge wall in the middle of the, hang on, did I say wall? I did hear, I meant a huge, uh, wall. no, not a wall, a wall, it was a, a toe wall, oh, oh okay. you know, grows on dead things, sometimes has red spots, oh, must be cracking up, anyway, ignoring that brain freeze, and to continue, 
You know how sometimes you think you see a movement out the corner of your eye, like a wisp of smoke or a shimmer of light on leaves that just might be something else, something unexpected. I kept thinking I saw a movement, but when I turned my head, there was nothing, or at least nothing substantial. It was like that all around the clearing. Shafts of sunlight would catch dust drifting on the breeze or something. Something and nothing. But then this, what would you call it? This illusion became stronger, like gossamer cobwebs condensing, then softening, curling and dancing closer and closer to the wall. Oh, you know, the thing, as if there were humpties drifting all around. Hang on, humpties? Where the hell did that come from? Oof. So, this smoke hovered above the wall and then began to, how can I put this? To solidify until it slowly dawned on me that there was a Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. What? Not bloody Humpty Dumpty. You know, thin little body. Wings, a Humpty, oh, whatever. Anyway, this Humpty really didn't look very pleased that I was there. Actually, it looked bloody scary, if I'm honest. Not at all cute in pink and little bell flowers for hats like Humpties are supposed to be. And certainly not about to grab me any wishes. Hang on, is that Humpties or is that Genius? Oh, I can say Genie, all right. <laughs> Then this creature glowered at me and then it opened its mouth. Oh, it had these pin sharp little teeth and its tongue was whipping in and out like a snake taste in the air. It began to mutter something, pointing at me with its thin, bony little finger. And I realised that I could distinguish a few words. It said, well, I can't quite remember what it said, but Suffice it to say, it was very threatening. Oh, well, I backed off smart as I can tell you. When I got behind the oak tree, I turned around and I ran for it. I noticed that the dog had stayed well out of the clearing. He was trembling and soon chased off down the hill and he wasn't moved, hasn't moved that fast in years. I started to run too. But then it all seemed a bit silly. The more I thought about it, the less tangible it all seemed. And the nearer I got to home, the more I realised it was just imagination. Ridiculous what your mind conjures up in a strange place, isn't it? I suppose I've been under a bit of stress lately. <laughs> mm. Anyway, I thought it might make the beginnings of a decent story. So that's why I'm recording this, so I don't forget it completely. And I'll fancy it up later, then I'll submit it to the Lantern for the lockdown stories, if it's any good. <sighs> oh, well, I suppose that's bedtime. Oh. Well, oh, she was gone, I suppose. Oh. Where's that sort of torch? <clears throat> that all looks fine, no? Switch is down. Must be a power cut then. No lights out at number 11. I'll just check the other way in case okay. I'm at the end. Mm. Oh, lights are at number 15 as well. And the street lights are on. Oh, what should I do? Oh. Uh, I know, I'll better phone the emergency electrician. Oh. Right, what's his name? What's his name? Phil, was it? Yeah.
Stop that cat, or you'll be going back to the cat rescue. <sighs> ah, there it is. Oh, it's just static. Shut up, cat. Oh, it's gone cold. I'll go outside. Might be better getting a line there. This is how the story came to us. We've made no alterations. We're not sure how it was sent to the lantern, but it was sent from her computer. It was a while before we looked at the transmission, at least a couple of weeks, when we saw everything. And we contacted the police, obviously, who found what was left of her. The coroner's verdict was that she died of a heart attack and that her pets, crazed with hunger, had or found whatever food they could. The coroner concluded that this morning was post-mortem and we showed them the recording, but they didn't refer to it during the inquest. 